My first conscious decision to make art probably happened when I was 10, 10 or 11 years old. Um, I was not the best student in early school, but when I took the art classes and the music classes, I was very, very engaged. And I started to make music and to draw and paint on my own outside of school. And probably by the time I was 14 or 15, I started doing graffiti throughout the city of Los Angeles, but also doing paintings and drawings on my clothes. So when I would wear the clothes to school, people would always ask, who is that a picture of? You know, what is this uh, portrait? And it would be people like Thelonious Monk or Sojourner Truth or Gandhi. And I was able to talk to them about what I knew about those people. And I realized that it was an important way of communicating ideas and um, communicating history. My name is Sanford Biggers. I'm a visual artist. I was born in Los Angeles, but I live in New York. And presently, I'm living in Rome as a fellow at the American Academy in Rome. I often get asked if I consider my work political. Um, I think it is, on some level, very political. I think about current events, not only in the US, but also internationally. And I weave some of those stories into my work. But as important as the politics and the social messages are, so are the formal aspects of the work and even references to art history. I'm very aware of the language that I'm working in and that it's a language that's been around for thousands of years. Uh, one of the chief aspects of my work throughout my career is the idea of rewriting history. Telling the stories that haven't been told before, using found objects, reconstructed, deconstructed objects to create a new language that has the ability to speak about that original object, the time that object was made, and what happens when I put my hands on it and modify that object in contemporary society. Two works that I think of immediately are the piece that I did that is now in the Brooklyn Museum collection called Blossom, which is a baby grand piano with a tree growing out of it. And as you walk close to look at the sculpture, the piano starts to play, and it's playing my version um, of Billie Holiday's Strange Fruit. And that piece is very personal to me because um, as a musician and an artist, I've been trying to experiment with different ways of including the visual and the sonic in a way where it's not just a soundtrack for a visual piece, but something that is totally integrated. But I also think it's um, an important piece because I think of the piano and the tree literally as a body. The piano is a stand-in for a body being lynched, but the piano is also a stand-in for the Buddha finding enlightenment under the tree. So there's a dichotomous meaning, and this happens in a lot of my work, uh, where it can be seen through a very politicized lens, but it could also be seen as a very, very transformative and spiritual lens. Uh, another piece that comes to mind actually is the BAM series. The BAM series for me is a deeply physical sculptural piece. Um, on a formal level, I was thinking of classic and traditional Greco-Roman sculpture. I was thinking about the first time I ever sculpted with marble or with wood. I was thinking about fetish objects from Asia, Africa, uh, Brazil, and so on. But I was also thinking about the politics in America, specifically police killing unarmed black men. And it was a struggle to make that, that project because it's such a difficult piece and it's so um, traumatizing to think of, you know, the fact that so many men are being killed, um, men like myself, and seeing myself embodied in those pieces. But at the same time, I felt that it had to be made because as hard as it is to watch, somehow it's beautiful and somehow it's painful, it's bittersweet. It makes you think about the content long after you've seen the piece. And that's the kind of impact that I'd like my work to have. So it's a way of having a conversation through materials and through time, basically. Um, and I think, for me, the process of construction, deconstruction, reconstruction is really a metaphor for life itself, as nothing is permanent, nothing is fixed. Even we as individuals are not permanent or fixed. Constantly evolving and then gone. But what remains? the memory, the spirit, the soul. That's what I try to imbue in the work, knowing that the physicality is malleable. 
it's shapeable, but the core and the intent that's in the work is able to communicate to people.